Welcome back. I'm Dr. Dai, and in this video, we're going to take a look at prokaryotes and eukaryotes in a little bit more detail. So remember that organisms are categorized into two main groups based on their cellular structure, prokaryotes, eukaryotes. Uh, bacteria and archaea, those are our examples of prokaryotic organisms. Uh, and then animals, plants, fungi, protists, those are our eukaryotic organisms. Uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes exhibit uh, distinct characteristics that impact their function and roles in the organisms that they make up, right? So prokaryotic cells are smaller, simpler, they lack that membrane-bound organelles, the nucleus, the DNA just floats free in their cytoplasm. Eukaryotic cells, they're much larger, uh, they're more complex, they contain membrane-bound organelles, including a well-defined nucleus where the DNA is housed. Uh, both types of cells are gonna have a cell membrane. They're gonna have cytoplasm. Uh, they're going to have some form of genetic material. The amount of genetic material varies, of course. And they have to have ribosomes to uh, translate that genetic material into proteins. Uh, but the organization is completely different. And that organization differs not just between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, but even amongst the different groups of these organisms, we can see a really diverse range of organizational uh, structures and styles. All right, prokaryotic cells. So like I already said, they're simple, they're single celled. We don't have any multicellular, not any true multicellular prokaryotes. They don't have a nucleus, no membrane bound organelles. Their DNA is found centrally located inside the cell. Um, and there's usually a darkened region called the nucleoid. Um, bacteria have cell walls made of peptidic lichen, uh, which is amino acids and sugar. So amino acids are proteins. So it's a protein and sugar coat. Um, there are different types of sugar coats. You may be familiar with terms like gram negative and gram positive. That's topics for a, a, different, a different time. Um, now archaea, they lack that peptidic lichen cell wall. Um, and some pro prokaryotes also have uh, flagella or um, pili or fimbrae. Uh, and some of these structures are for motility. Some of them are for reproduction. Uh, it just, it varies depending on the organism. Now, eukaryotic cells, very briefly, because we're gonna go into a lot more detail on eukaryotic cells later. Um, they have membrane bound nuclei. They have membrane bound organelles like uh, mitochondria, like the chloroplast if it's a plant cell. Um, these organelles, they're right, they're membrane bound compartments or sacs, if you will, um, inside the cell with specialized functions. And we're gonna look at those organelles in a lot more detail in the next section. So a note about size. Uh, it can be difficult to imagine how small these things are. So this is an image from your book that shows relative size of things um, compared to, you know, like us, an egg, cells, you know, how, how different, um, how tiny these things are. So cells come in a really wide range of sizes because they're adapted to perform specific functions that that size is necessary for. So we typically measure cells in micrometers, uh, which is one micrometer is equal to one millionth of a meter. Very, very, very tiny. Um, bacteria are often just a few micrometers in length, um, making them some of the smallest cells. Uh, we don't consider viruses true cells, right? Because they lack like, a complete cell membrane and stuff, but they're even smaller. Eukaryotic cells can be quite large. Um, they can include you know, nerve cells that can be over 100 micrometers in length. And I know you're like, that's big, but in, you know, when you're looking at a microscope, that's actually, that's really big. <laughs> um, you have to zoom way out to see the whole thing in one, in one image, unless you're in a dissecting scope. Um, so eukaryotic cell structures, some of these ones that can get really big or really long, um, that that's because of their function, right? Nerve cells have these really long axon terminals for connecting to the next, the next nervous cell. Um, cell size influences how substances are exchanged, and this is really important. It's going to make up the last two sections of this chapter. Um, they, uh, how big the cell is 
determines how far something has to travel to get across the cell. So cell size is limited because volume increases much more quickly than surface area does. So uh, imagine a little sphere and as we get, you know, it's just got this little bit inside of it and as we get bigger, 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 the volume is getting much bigger while the surface area, you know, it's getting bigger, but it's not nearly as, it's not keeping up the pace, right? And you can pull out your stuff from, oh man, high school geometry if you wanna look over how that works. But the point is that the bigger the cell is, the farther a distance things have to diffuse within the cell to you know, send signals, to send proteins, organelles, that sort of stuff. If a cell gets too big, it can't efficiently do that. And the other problem too is if it doesn't have enough surface area, it can't diffuse things across the membrane readily enough to maintain it, the nutrient levels that it needs. So cell size is very much dependent on that surface to volume ratio. All right, so we made it through our basic comparison of prokaryotes to eukaryotes. Um, up next, we're gonna look at eukaryotes in a lot more detail. So I will see you there.